Good afternoon, Hope Center Ministry Discipleship Hall, Hope Center Ministry, Hope Center Ministry YouTube. It's Latasha McMillan here. And also to all who will watch this video, I am here today with a quick word for you guys. And of course, you, you know what I say every time. Man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And I am here today with a word from the Lord. Amen. So today I just wanted to read something. Just keep it simple, something from the scriptures. Um, the writer in Hebrews, he, he he gives us a lot of wise advice. And in this context of um, the chapter, he's telling us how to be careful when it comes to living life. And that's some good advice uh, from the word of God that we can all take heed to. Because we know that life, <laughs> it can be a marathon. Sometimes it can be a sprint. But as we are in Christ Jesus, Jesus walking this path of salvation and walking out our redemption is definitely going to be a course. It's going to be a obstacle course. And sometimes it can be very challenging. So the Bible and the word of God is like a GPS system. It's uh, I mean, it clearly tells us the way in which we need to go. And it's up to us if we're going to decide to follow the instructions or we're going to try to figure it out and think that we know the way and do it our own way. Amen. But nonetheless, this is the word. This is, as I stated in the beginning, the bread of life. This is the one sure thing that we can only live by. Amen. And that is the word and the instructions of God. So let's go ahead and get into the word, the Bible. Um, let's go to Hebrews 12. We're going to be reading 12 and 13. 12 and 13. Um, this is pretty much the end of the book. We're not sure who wrote the book of Hebrews. It's been said that it was the Apostle Paul. It was Apollos. It was uh, Barnabas, uh, Luke. Um, just from the context in which I read it, it looks to me like it sounds like the Apostle Paul. And we know he did a lot of um, instruction. He did a lot of as an apostle writing to the different churches in whom he was um, overseeing. Amen. But nonetheless, regardless who wrote it. It is a divine word from God and it's instructions that we can all live by. So let's go ahead and start. And I'm going to start in um, chapter 12, verse 12. And this here is important. And it really reflects back on something that Jesus said in Revelation. But this is something that's important to all of us as we're walking this journey. Uh, Pilgrim's Progress, as I always said, we're walking this, this journey um, on the road of salvation. Um and this is what he said. He said, you have become weak. So make yourselves strong again. OK, because, you know, when we all started off. We all started off with a sure faith. We started off with strong faith. Anytime anybody's running a marathon or a race, they start off well. You know, they start off well. But then, you, you know, after you've ran for so long, you start to get tired. Your body has endured so much. And, and you're just like, whoo, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not where I began and I'm not where I need to finish. I'm somewhere in the middle here, but man, I'm tired. But nonetheless, that we know that, you know, sometimes we have to slow down and then we pick the pace back up. But nonetheless, we can't stop. And that's something that we cannot do. And as we see ourselves, and then he's talking about here is faith, because we know that it takes faith, one, to have salvation. So he's talking about faith here. He says, you have become weak. So make yourself strong again. And to stay in God, God we have to have faith. And just to reiterate what he's saying here, Jesus says something when he's talking to the seven churches in, um, in the book of Revelations. Let's go look what Jesus says. Uh, go to Revelations 3. So he can, I mean, this context really can be applied to the church um, of Smyrna. And, um, but he's talking to the church in Sardis. But if you want to go to Revelations and read Revelations 2, uh, verses 1 through... Verses 1 through 17, he's talking to the church of, um, no, I'm sorry, verses 1 through 11, he's talking to, to the church of Smyrna. It, this can apply to the church of Smyrna as well. But here he's talking to the church of uh, Sardis, in the church of, church of Sardis. And let's go to um, Revelations 3 and 2. And this is Jesus speaking now. We know that this is the end of the book. This is the end. These are end times. <clears throat> And I feel like he's talking to the church of today. Okay, three, two. He says, wake up. Wake up. Strengthen what you have left before it dies completely. I have found that you are doing less than what 
than less than what my God wants. So do not forget what you have received and heard. Obey it and change your hearts and lives. So you must wake up or I will come like a thief and you will not know when I come to you. Okay, so you you have to have faith. We can't grow tired on this journey. We can't become lazy. We can't throw in a towel, sat down, and just give up in a faith. We got to have faith. And he said, strengthen what you have. Strengthen what you have before even what you have is taken away from you. We know the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if, you know, the enemy is thrown distractions and hardships and things in front of us, um... He, he uses those things as a weapon to try to wear us out. But nonetheless, we have something that's greater than our, our problems and, and the distractions that have come. We have faith. And, and that's what the writer is saying. And that's what Jesus is saying in Revelation. You have what you need. Just strengthen it. And sometimes in order to strengthen it, you got to go back and you got to remember the Lord your God. You got to take your focus off of what you're going through, off the distractions. You got to take the focus off of yourself. And you got to put that focus back on the cross. You got to put that focus on where you had your focus to begin with when you first came to Jesus Christ. And we got to know that whatever it is that needs to be done in him is already done. We just got to walk out that grace. Amen. So he says, you have become weak, so make yourself strong again. Keep on the right path so the weak will not stumble, but rather be strengthened. If you will depend on God to strengthen you, he will strengthen you. For those that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. God has to be a factor. He has to be foundation. Don't let what you're going through, don't let this race, don't let this obstacle course wear you out. Amen. He also goes on to say, try to live in peace with all people and try to live free from sin. These are the things that the enemy is going to use, you guys, people and things to get us off course. Anyone whose life is holy, I'm sorry, anyone whose life is not holy will never see the Lord. Be careful that no one fails to receive God's grace and begins to cause trouble among you. And there are people like that. Now, notice that he's not talking about the world. He is talking here to the church. I'm going to read that again. Be careful that no one fails to receive God's grace and begins to cause trouble among you. Misery loves company. There are those people who say that they are believing in God and that they're followers of Christ, but they have not freely received the grace of God. And therefore... They don't have no peace. And when they don't have no peace, they're going to try to seek to steal your peace. They've made themselves available vessels for the enemy. So he said, be careful that no one fails to receive God's grace and begin to cause trouble among you. A person like that can ruin many of you. You got to be careful who you are dealing with. Know who you are dealing with. Know who's in God and who's not. And use wisdom in the Holy Spirit to govern those type of relationships accordingly. Amen. Because he said it. If you don't do that, somebody like that will ruin you. The enemy will use whatever he can use to kill, steal, and to destroy. And that ain't what God has called us unto. Amen. Okay. Be careful that no one takes part in sexual sin or is like Esau and never thinks about God. As the eldest son, Esau would have received everything from his father. The firstborn, that was his right, is to receive the inheritance of the father. But he sold all of that for a single meal. Be careful what is being presented unto you. Be careful what the enemy is putting before you to make it look like it is bigger and better than God, okay? He said, you remember that after Esau did this, he wanted to get his father's blessing, but his father refused. Esau could find no way to change what he had done, even though he wanted the blessing so much that he cried. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, that is burning with fire. You have not come to darkness, sadness, and storms. Huh, let me say that again. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire. You have not come to darkness, sadness, and storms. That stuff was in our past, okay? You not have you have not come to the noise of a trumpet or to the sound of a voice like the one the people of Israel heard and begged not to hear another word. And this was back when Moses was leading the people. Go back and read that in Exodus. They did not want to hear the command. If anything, even an animal touched the mountain as Mount Sinai, 
it must be put to death with stones. God was on that place. It was holy. Remember that it was only the priest that could go before God, not not the people. But God' presence was on Mount Sinai, and He spoke directly to the people. But the the deity of His presence and His holiness it feared the people so much that they didn't even want to hear it no more. So they told Moses, "Listen, you talk to God. We we don't want to hear it. You talk to God because there's something about when you have to come face to face with God, and that's something that we are all gonna do one of these days. It ain't." Well, praise God for those of us that's that's in Christ. We will stand before God and he will be our mediator. Amen. But the thing is, you have to be in Christ. You have to be in Christ. If not, we will stand before God and we will give an account for ourselves. And you don't want to stand before God and give an account for yourself. I want to stand before God and say, I was in Christ Jesus. And now he speak, He gets to speak for me. But we don't want to stand before God and Moses have to speak for us because Jesus said it. Jesus said it. We can't save ourselves. And he said, for those of you who are trusting in the law to save you, he said, you will stand before God and Moses himself will say that you are guilty. So if you're not in Christ and you're depending on the law and and eating pork and and not honoring the Sabbath. Now, these are the things. These are God's commands. Yes, they are. And the Holy Spirit within us will lead us and teach us and guide us according to the words of God. But if this is something that you are doing within yourself and you think that this is what's making you right with God, you will stand before God. Within your own yourself, within your own self, and Jesus Himself said that you won't hear me, hear me say that you are guilty, but Moses will. So be careful what you are looking to to save you. We can't save ourselves; only Christ Jesus can save us. Okay? He said what they saw was so terrible that Moses said, "I am shaking with fear." Even Moses Himself said, "I'm shaking." But you have come to Mount Zion. See, God ain't on Mount Sinai, Sinai anymore. He's on Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands of angels that's gathered together with joy. You have come to the meetings of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all people, and to the spirits of good people who have been made perfect. Glory be to God. You hear that? He said, we've been made perfect. Hallelujah. You have come to Jesus, the one who brought the new agreement from God to his people. And you have come to the sprinkled blood that has a better message than the blood of Abel. Remember, the Bible said that Abel's blood was calling out to God from the ground. Justice, justice. So be careful and do not refuse to listen when God speaks. Be careful. I'm telling you guys, in these last days, God is speaking. Be careful and do not refuse to listen when God speaks. Okay, I'm going to have to turn my camera. I'm sorry, it's getting hot (laughs) sitting the way that it is. Others refused to listen to him when he warned them on earth, and they did not escape. So it will be worse for us if we refuse to listen to God who warns us from heaven. When he spoke before, his voice shook the earth.